Hi guys, Roger York here, and today I am in Space Engineers, and I'm going to be giving you a little bit of a tutorial on how to set up aerodynamic control surfaces in the game. Now, this is using a couple of mods and a script. However, as you can see here, it allows you to set up an aircraft which has realistic aerodynamic properties through use of control surfaces. Now, the aerodynamics are admittedly a little bit limited in some regards, however, they do give you a fairly decent amount of control without needing gyroscopes. So if you're doing a really sort of hardcore survival playthrough, or you just want to have a little bit of fun in the game without um, using some of the tools that the game has given you, then this is actually a really, really fun thing to do. However, it's a little bit tricky to set up, hence why I'm creating this tutorial. Now, I'm just going to say this right here right now. I was not the first person to do something like this. And, um, however, there have been a few people who've been wanting sort of tutorials on how to do this. So, I'm giving this to them, basically. And if you get some enjoyment out of it, and some use out of it, hopefully, that means it's not a wasted endeavour. So... First things first, we're going to need to do a little bit of world setup. So, let's stop watching this nice pretty footage, and let's go to the create world settings. So, here we are in the Space Engineers main menu, so let's go to new game, as you always do, click on custom game. Now, for the basis, we are going to be using the star system map, because it has no grids whatsoever, we're going to set to creative, and in the advanced settings, most of these are going to be your personal preferences. I turn off block limits, for example. I also turn off a few other things. However, in-game scripts, this is an important one. You're going to need to turn this on in order to make it work. And as you can see here, I just, I'm turning off a lot of stuff that I personally find to be kind of useless, especially in a creative world, but it's left on by default. Um... Things like drones and the like, I just, I don't need them. I turn on spectator. Cargo ships are basically in the same category as drones, yet you, you need to turn them off as well. So there's a few settings, but these are mostly preferential. The important one is the in-game scripts that you're going to want to turn on. Now, here is the main important part. We're going to need a few mods in order to make this work. So once this loads up, all right, so... First mod that we're going to be putting in is going to be Text HUD API. This is basically just a quick thing that allows some other mods which have a dependency on it to have things. HUD Compass, again, that's more just navigational. You don't need it. Uh, build Vision, again, not necessary, but makes things a lot easier when setting this up. Now, here's the first really important one, Control Module. And what this does is it basically allows you to do all the setting up of controls. Now, aerodynamic physics, this is the mod that actually adds the aerodynamics to the game. And then we, I generally use Midspace's speed mod 500 meters per second max, just allows a little more utility. Modular airfield runway, again, I not necessary, you just use it for making near indestructible runways. Then, you're going to want plane parts, I also throw in plane parts plus, just so that um, I've got the propeller in there. And those are all the mods except for one that you're going to need, the other is... Um, a script called Easy Automation version 2.0 and now all of these mods are going to be linked down in the description for you to get and uh, like I said you only really need the aerodynamics and control module speed mod you'll probably want uh, but if you don't get it then you need to not edit any of the drag settings as we're going to do in this little bit of setup once the world finally takes a name from me don't use special characters it's um it, it it's annoying anyway once the world loads we're going to go through setting up some of the mod settings that you're going to need to do otherwise it's going to be a little bit finicky so we're going to hit respawn it's going to drop us on the standard point on the earth-like planet where the seam of the world is and you've just got this great big 
terrain scene that is just <laughs> hilarious that this is the first thing someone would see upon entering this world. Anyway, so as you can see, we've actually got an indicator for wind. Now, you are not going to see that initially. This is because I have default settings for the aerodynamics. So you're going to want to press Alt F10 to open up the admin screen. Then mod, click on mod settings, aerodynamic physics, server settings, physics. You're going to want to click on advanced lift to enable it to true. Then you're going to want to click on drag multiply. It's going to be 500 by default. And you just type in 100 and click on confirm. That's going to set it to 100. And then what you're going to want to do is press the save as default button. That's going to basically make it so that whenever you load into a game with the aerodynamics physics mod, it will be on those settings. Now, wind speed, 10 meters per second, it's not bad. That's about 20 knots. And that's fair enough. And if you're just taking your first foray into it, leave it at 10 meters per second. That's going to be best. Now, you're going to want to open chat menu, go to mod settings by pressing F2. And then you're going to want to enable the center of lift gizmo to auto. That's basically going to help you out when you're doing a bit of designing. Okay, so we are now back at my uh, testing airfield at the North Pole. Sun never sets. And as you can see here, we've got um, two of the aircraft I was flying earlier. However, if we go over here, we can see this is one that I have prepared specially for this tutorial. I have gutted it of all the working components, all the ailerons, elevators, rudder, timer blocks, even the battery, because it kind of gets in the way where I hide the programming block and uh, other s stuff. So yeah let's get started with what you need to begin with so open up the toolbar first things first of course we are going to need a programming block so, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just hide it in here nice and snug make sure that it is aligned purely just for a little bit of ocd is all and that's nice and hidden snug under there. So, we're now gonna get two LCD text panels and just gonna hide them in there as well. Now, one of those is gonna be the debug LCD that uh, will output any errors that um, occur. Hopefully, shouldn't need that, but if it does happen, then we can deal with that when it happens. And the other is gonna be the one which stores the code tells all our various control surfaces what they are going to be doing. So, with those in there, I can now put the battery back in place. There we go. Nice and snug. Fits just perfectly. Now, I'm going to need some time blocks as well. So, I'm going to put the first one just in that space there. Then, another two there. We're up to three... And we need a total of 10, I, uh, if memory serves me correctly. So, that's 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So, before we go any further, we're going to do a little bit of naming work. So, first of all, let's find that programming block. And we're going to name this Easy Automation, because that is the program that is going to be running. Uh, this isn't necessary, but I do it with all my programming blocks, just so that I know what each programming block is running. It's uh, just a little way of keeping track of stuff. You don't have to do it, but it's nice. So, I'm just going to search in my scripts. This is the script that we're going to be using, Easy Automation, version 2.0. That will be linked down in the description. Anyway, copy it to editor. And there. That's all we need to do with that for the time being. Now, let's find all our timer blocks. So, first things first. This is going to be named Flight W. This is going to be Flight S, Flight A, 
light D, light Q, light E, then this one is going to be light Q release, light E release, then light W D, or W S release, and light A D release. Now, what these four are for is they will be the ones that will detect when we release any of these keys so that they know to then reset the control surfaces. Now, the reason why I've got separate ones for Q and E is because I'm using a concept called differential ailerons, which means that the downward deflecting aileron traverses to a smaller angle than the upward deflecting aileron. It's just a small thing that reduces adverse yaw and side slip. You don't have to do this, and if you choose not to, then you will just need one single timer block for the Q and E release. However, let's now get on with setting these up partially. So, this is flight W, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the control module, we're going to select an input to add, and we're going to scroll down until we find key W. Once that's in, you just leave it, that is that done for now, and we're just going to do this for the rest of these. What this does is through control module, when we press the button that each timer is set to uh, look for, it will trigger the timer immediately so we don't have to worry about setting up a delay or anything like that. It is essentially pressing the trigger now button. So, And it does that occasionally so if it does just uh, decide to do that you scroll down and you click the clear settings button and it will clear the key. Usually I believe that's supposed to work however it currently is not so I don't know if that is a current bug with the mod and whether that's going to be fixed but until such time you can just hit clear settings all right so now what we're doing here is the release ones so as before we select the key that it's meant to be looking for however we now go to the trigger on state portion and what we're going to do is we're going to press the drop down and hit the released setting and then we're just going to do that for the rest of these. So, here we go. What this is going to do is it is now going to trigger the timer whenever that key is released, rather than when the key is pressed. Now, for these ones, we can just add multiple keys, as you can see here. See, it is now monitoring for both the W and the S. And we set it to released. And then we just do the same here for the flight AD. Now, the reason I've got um, these named flight is just so that I'm going to be able to easily find them by searching flight in the top bar. It is simply a matter of just finding them a lot easier. And, of course, the reason for naming them with the key that they are monitoring is, again, just making sure that if any troubleshooting needs to happen, it can happen. Alright, so that all looks correct. So, let's gonna find our text panels. So, first one is gonna be called Debug LCD. And that's gonna allow it to output um, any errors that the script throws. And we will then be able to read them and hopefully fix whatever the problem is. Now, this one we are just gonna call Flight. And the reason we do this is we have to name it specifically so that the script knows which text panel to look for. So, once we've done that, we can now enter the custom data on this. However, we have a little bit more to place down until we can do that. So, we are now actually going to be building our control surfaces. So, first of all, make sure that mirroring is on. It just makes things a lot easier. And those are going to be the motors for our ailerons. Now it's very important that you use the plane wheel motor um, as it is the only 
uh, motor slash rotor that doesn't clang out currently. Um, I'm afraid I don't know why that is the case, but it is the case. So we use those. Now, if you want to pretty things up, what you can do is use some blast door blocks, specifically the blast door edges, and you just drag them along there. And as you can see, it just sort of blends in almost. Now, uh, for, the tra for the control surfaces, I like to use these trailing edge pieces. Or it's very important that you use these sort of uh, two by one by one blocks and draw a line of them. If you use any of the larger ones, it does cause the control surfaces to clang out. Again, I don't know why. Space Engineers is Space Engineers. Um, all I can tell you is what I have observed in my testing. So, here we go. We've nearly got our aileron sorted. There we go. Nice and easy. And now, I have used two blocks um, for my elevators. However, you could easily do a single elevator design if you so wished. That would work perfectly. And yeah. But if you do use two, you are just going to make sure that you have that mirroring on. And if you're in survival, just make sure that Space Engineers doesn't auto-rotate the orientation on them. Otherwise, you could end up having a little bit of problem where they roll at the wrong side of each other. At which point you have to do a little bit of um, editing of your script, probably. But it's no worries there. Right, so we're now going to use Build Vision to basically edit the names of all of these motors. Uh, you can use the in-game control... Um, console, but honestly, uh, build vision just makes things so much easier because all you have to do is look at a thing and control click with your middle mouse button, and then another middle click to select an option, you open the chat, and you can just rename it. So, this is the left elevator. Now, it's very important that you don't leave any spaces because it can mess up the script if you have that. So just left elevator and then go about doing pretty much the same for all your other control surfaces. So this one is going to be our right elevator. This one, which is our rudder, believe it or not, we are going to call rudder. Over here, we have our right aileron. Please ignore uh, the fact that I'm uh, going into the uh, pause menu every so often. That is just a closed build vision. And there's probably a better way to do it, but <laughs> that's the way I end up doing it. Okay, so that should be all of our control surfaces. So, if we go inside here, right aileron, right elevator, rudder, and left aileron, and left elevator. So, that is good. We have now got all of our control surfaces named, and that is now going to allow us to reference them inside the code that we're going to be putting in the custom data of the flight text panel. So, what we're going to want to do is we're going to go in here, and... What we're first going to do is going to be really simple. We're just going to do the elevator movement. So, I'm going to type in at. And let's call this command pitch up. Then, it's very important that you use um, the sort of squiggly bracket. I actually cannot remember the name of it, but it's the one that isn't the regular circular bracket or square brackets. Right, so, then new line, that's also very important for this. So, this is now the point where we're using easy automation, and we're going to put in the command short rotate left elevator to, let's go with... 30 at 10 and short rotate right elevator 
230 at 10. And then we're going to close that off with the same bracket, but this time the closing bracket. Okay. So currently we don't actually know if that is going to be the correct angle because we haven't seen the elevators deflect yet. So we will just leave that for the time being. But we also need to put in the other pitch commands. So at pitch down short rotate left elevator to negative 30 at 10. Now what you can also do is just actually copy and paste bits of uh, the previous code and just change the number up a little bit like that. That is alternatively much easier. So, and then finally, we're going to want to put in pitch reset. And we're going to take this. And we are just going to set the angle back to zero. And there we go. So, those three commands should allow us to control the elevators to adjust the pitch of the aircraft. So, let's start with going back to our timer blocks. So, W is what we're going to want for pitching downwards. So, we go into Setup Actions, then we find the Easy Automation Programming block that we had before. We're going to drag it down to the toolbar, and we're going to hit Run. Now, this is the part where we make the script look for the command that we've put in that code block. So, we're going to type in light, which as you remember, is the name of our text panel. Then, open circular brackets, not the squiggly ones, and we're going to type in pitch down, and close the brackets. That should make it so that whenever we press the W key, it will move the elevators to the position that we specified in the pitch down. Now, we also need the reset, so let's go into the release. We're going to hit setup actions, easy automation, run light, pitch reset, close brackets, and that should work. So let's give that a test. Now I'm just going to take the aircraft down off of this uh, landing gear. That was there because whilst it was missing some of those components, it would droop down onto its nose as it was unbalanced. Yeah, terribly embarrassing, but there we go. So let's press the W key and see what happens. Okay, we've got one of the elevators moving. So the left elevator is not working. So let's take a quick look at that. Let's see what's wrong. So that is named correctly. So let's go back into here and let's look at the custom data. Don't oh, rotate, left elevator. Ah, here we go. There, see, I missed out an E there and completely messed it up. So let's give that another look. And there we go, it is working just fine. Now, of course, as we can see, the elevators are deflecting upwards and that's not what we want for when we're pitching down. We're gonna want the elevators to be moving downwards in order to increase the lift at the rear of the aircraft, which will cause it to pivot and pitch downwards. So we need to go back into our custom code, custom data, and what we're going to do is we're just going to hit a minus there, minus there, take away the minuses there. And there we go. It's as simple as that. So let's now set up the uh, timer block for pitching up. So flight S, set up the actions, easy automation, run, light, pitch up. And let's give it a quick test. And there we go. We have got our elevators fully working just great. So it's now time to enter the rest of the code for all of the control services that we need. So 
let's go back into the custom data. Now, let's get the rudder up and running because that's always nice to have and it is relatively simple compared to the ailerons. In fact, it is pretty much just going to be the same sort of stuff as we've got for the pitch. So, at your left, short rotate rudder to, let's, let's guess and say that it's going to be the positive, and there we go. Oh, and, of course, only got one rudder block. Now, uh, just a bit of a quick elaboration on what these numbers mean. So, the first number is going to be the angle that you are rotating to, and the second number is the speed that it will rotate at. I found that uh, these settings are generally good, um, however, you know, you may want to play around and uh, see what works best for you. So, let's do your right, short rotate, and there we go. And now we'll just put in the your reset. And there we go. Now, we're going to bind rudder to A and D. That way, it will also work alongside the tailwheel turning so that the same yawing motion will always be assigned to the A and D keys, regardless of if we're on the ground or in the air. So, set up actions. For the A key, we are going to want yawing to the left. As you can see, once you've actually got it down for just one set of controls, it's very easy to replicate the process and do it on the next set. There we go. And flight AD, this is the reset one. All right, let's give that a test. Okay, so release isn't working. Let's see what's up with that. So first of all, just gonna see. Yep, it is correctly monitoring what's there. Let's just take a look and see what's here. Uh, LCD flight does not contain a code block named reset. Okay. Alright, yeah. Let's, let's see what I did there. Your reset. Uh, I probably didn't, uh, like this incorrectly. Of course, those of you watching the video and me in post-editing, I will notice. And, um, if this is the issue, yeah. And there we go. That is correctly moving. However, what I'm currently doing is I'm pressing the D key, and that is the motion that would have us yawing left. So, yet again, I am 0 for 2 on guessing the correct motions on the flight controls, and need to, once again, swap around my minuses. Who knows, maybe I'll finally get it for the ailerons. <laughs> so... We now need to go back into here, and what I'm going to do is enter at roll left, short rotate, now let's see, because I'm wanting to roll to the left, I'm going to want the left aileron to go upwards and the right aileron to go downwards, so Let's go and assume that it is going to be the positive on the left. So I'm going to set that to 15 at 5. And the right aileron is going to go to 30 at 10. So this way they both reach their maximum deflection at the same time. However, like I said, I'm using concept of differential ailerons. 
and I've just realized I think I have set that up wrong. Sorry, I want that one at 30 and this one at minus 15. So, I am just going to test this out just to make sure that that is actually the correct motion before I type any more code. So, because rolling left, that is going to be bound to the Q key. We'll go here. Easy automation. Run. Flight. Roll. Left. Okay, I'm pressing the Q key and nothing is happening. So, let's take a look at the debug LCD. It has nothing for me. Uh, yeah, that should be right. Let's take a look back in the custom data. Short rotate, left aileron, short rotate, right aileron, roll left. Okay. What is going on? Ailerons are named correctly. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Oh, I, I see what it is. I completely missed out to type in the 2 in the command. People who've been following on, you will be laughing at me right now. Alright, let's give that a check. Okay. Still no bueno. Alright, let's see. Debug LCD will probably be giving us something now. Nope, still giving us nothing. Alright, what's, what's giving, guys? Roll left. Short rotate left aileron to 35. Short rotate right aileron. Even if that were correct, that's something I need to fix there. Uh, right. Like you. Monitoring the Q key. When it's pressed. Run. Flight. Roll. Left. Double check in the flight, but that is exactly what I put it as. Yes, it is. Alright. Okay, this is a bit weird. Alright, we're going to actually make sure that these can actually rotate. Because this is now actually... Okay, that one can rotate. As can that one. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to just clear the settings on this. And we're going to do a complete reset on this just to make sure that this is actually working. So, easy automation. First, let's just move that from toolbar. Run. Light. Just. I am just doing a double check because. Roll left. Okay, so it is not registering that properly. Alright, let's see if it's an actual problem with the code and the timer. We'll just hit the trigger now. Okay.
Okay, it is throwing some stuff at me here. All right. Okay, there we go. That is back to what it should be. Looks like um, we did something that caused an error in the easy automation script. However, that has now been fixed and everything is back to normal. Absolutely fine. Okay. And also, this is the wrong way around. So, of course it is. I am zero for free now, guys. Uh, fortunately, I don't think I can get the other direction of roll wrong because I've gotten this direction correct. <laughs> Alright, so... We now need to put in the roll right and the roll resets. So, I'm going to call this one long, roll left reset. And basically just going to throw these to zero. And we're now going to copy and paste these just for doing the right hand roll. So, here we go. Roll right. And roll right reset. So this is now going to go to 15. This is going to go to minus 30. Readjust the speeds so that they are correct. And that should all be correct. Now let's set these up properly. So flight queue release is going to be here. Light, roll, left, release, reset, sorry. Then, light E. Roll, right. And... Okay, and that should do it. So, for rolling left, that is correct. And the reset works. And rolling right, that is correct. And the reset works. And so, that is all of our control surfaces properly mapped, working just as intended. We had a little bit of a um, snafu there, where the code block decided to throw such an error that it decided to die on us. But here's the thing, we fixed the error and it's actually good that you guys saw me make that error because it shows you exactly what kind of stuff can go wrong and best ways to go about troubleshooting it. So I don't think I'm going to edit that out. Um, if I have edited it out, then I'm going to edit this out. Anyway. I've been Roger York, and this has been a tutorial on how to set up your control surfaces. If you found this tutorial useful, maybe do me a solid and just hit the like button, maybe? Uh, share it with your friends if they want to set up control surface aircraft. Who knows? But thanks very much for watching, and peace out.